Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So by the end of this video, you are going to have learned how to produce an indie folk slash alternative song the likes of Lord Huron, Yolklore, and Phoebe Bridgers, just to name a few. And you're going to learn what goes into this type of production because I'm going to walk you through step by step a remake that I did of Lord Huron's song, The Night We Met. So let's dive in. So here's the remake, and then we'll dive in and talk about it. I'm not the only trailer Who has not repaid his death We'll get into the rest of the song as we progress throughout this video. So let's dive into step by step, piece by piece, how was this production constructed? So I thought the best place to start would be this electric guitar arpeggio sound, right? So it filters in here in the intro. Actually, before we get to that, let's start with the O's. Why don't we do that? Let's start with the O's. So it just repeats that twice. Now I've got four O tracks here. The first two, O1 and 2, are singing the exact same thing. So it's like double takes. And then I got one pan left and one pan right, I believe. And then we've got three and four here that are actually not singing O's. They're technically singing hum. So it's like mmm, but it's a low harmony. And so, right? and then you layer them together. And then it just repeats. And then you've got that guitar coming in. And it's real pretty and stuff. So, now this electric guitar arpeggio, actually no, I forgot about the reverb the, that the O's are being sent to. So the O's are right here in purple these four O tracks, I'm sending them to the background vocals bus, which is where the processing is happening. So I've got just a bit of JJP just to throw some compression EQ on it, just to process it a bit, some extra EQ because I thought in the context of this mix, that's what it needed, some OTT, very subtle though. And then I'm sending it, this is where the majority of this sound is coming from, I'm sending this background vocals bus with all the O's to a plate reverb right here that I've got set up on a return track, also known as effects channel or aux track, depending on your DAW, right here. So this, I'm using Valhalla Vintage Verb, but you can use any reverb. This is like a church hall cathedral type of sound, and I went with two and a half seconds on this reverb. So let's come back here and let's listen to that. Let's really crank this reverb so you can hear it. Right, so that's what's going, that's what's happening there. And then after this reverb, I've just got a slight, ever so slightly, some OTT on this reverb channel. Now, this OTT, because we have the reverb on a return track, that OTT is only processing the reverb signal. And it helps brighten it up ever so slightly, so that's why it's there. So that is the O's. Now let's move on to this electric guitar arp, which I had started with, right? So I fade it in with the volume fader, I'll automate the volume, so it starts to swell in. Now, when it comes to processing on this guitar, I'm sending this to a bus right here, I'm calling amp, and this is where I have the GTR tool rack. And this is where most of the work is happening. So I started with a preset, and then I just adjusted it from there until I thought it sounded good. Which is how I like to work. If your VSTs or your effects and plugins have presets, start there and see if you can get some cool sounds. And then you can obviously always adjust it from there, but I think that's just a great workflow. So here's the guitar just dry. And then here's with the guitar tool rack. And then I do have this little compressor here. Uh, if we turn that on. I guess I just thought it needed some compression. I don't know. Uh, it was just, you know, in, in the moment you do things and then you look back, you're not sure 
if it needed it or not, but I'll trust that I, I knew what I was doing. So then we've got some EQ on this as well. Again, just to help it fit in the mix. So that way it has its own little pocket. Uh, and these, because these things are all relative, especially with EQ, right? So it depends on the mix. And then we've got some, um, and yeah, so I played after that, I played around with just some saturation and distortion, this type of thing. And it's pretty subtle. So I've got fatness and color from Sausage Fattener and that helps beefing up beef up the sound a little bit and then I've got some RC20 so here's without RC20 and here's with RC20 adds that extra little roundness to the sound I went with a lush and crunch guitar preset and then adjusted it from there so as you can see it's just, it's just a brick by brick approach and it's not like I planned to add all these plugins but it's just that this guitar I was like it needs a bit more roundness okay maybe I could add RC20 or sausage fatten or some other saturation and then if it gives me a little bit if it gets me closer to what I want, then I'm like, okay, that's good. And then I might still want another adjustment or I'm, I still might feel like it's lacking in another area. And then you perhaps add a sausage fat or something else, right? So that is how this process uh, unfolds. And then after that, I've got binaural pan, which this is to adjust the stereo width. So I actually sometimes like to make things more mono instead of having everything be spread out in the stereo field. Sometimes it can sound really cool to have certain tracks be very narrow. And so here's with that on, here's with it off, here's with it on. It helps focus that guitar sound just a little bit more. And in this mix particu in particular, I thought it sounded good because, as we'll get into in a second, the slap delay on the lead vocal is very wide. So that sort of occupies the, the fringes or the, the periphery of the mix. And then you've got the, the lead vocal or the dry lead vocal and this guitar that are more hovering around the center. So, and then I've just got a bit of OTT to glue the entire guitar track together at the end, depth at like 11%, so it's not doing a ton. And then some chorus and, some, and then some distortion, right? So I actually ended up putting quite a few plugins on here, but all of them are doing pretty subtle things outside of the guitar tool rack. So the, the GTR tool rack is where most of the work is coming from. And then everything else was just like, and I think I did it, yeah, I did it in this case because even this final result here is isn't anything close to the original on Lord Huron's track. So I was trying to get it there, but I failed. But it still sounds okay for what it is, right? So that's what's happening on the inserts on this guitar. And then I'm sending it to a reverb and a delay. Now the reverb that it's being sent to is the same reverb that the O's are being sent to that we already talked about. Valhalla, you know, this hall sanctuary type of reverb. And then I'm sending it just a little bit of it to the slap delay as well. But we'll talk about the slap delay in a second, because once we get to the lead vocal, that is the primary sound that you hear or the primary effect on that lead vocal is the slap delay. So we'll get into that in a second. So we've already talked about the O's. We talked about this electric guitar arpeggio track. Now let's dive into the lead vocal. So the lead vocal comes in over here. I'm not the only trailer. Now this has, you know, compression, obviously it has like a de -er on to start. And then I've got my three step compression system and then some EQ. So I'm not going to get into the compression and the EQ because that'll just make this video, I think, unnecessarily longer. And I talk about that stuff all the time anyway. Plus, I've got free guides for both. So I'll leave a link below to my vocal EQ and compression guides. They're 100% free. So download those if you need some help, if you're struggling with making your compression and your EQ settings work well in your vocal mixes. So yeah, let's go step by step here. de -er, I've got my three-step compression system. Then I've got the EQ, which is just doing some of that, nothing too crazy. And then after we get past the original EQ compression de -er, then we've got, I played around with some saturation, which you almost always want to do, right? You want your vocal to have a bit of, of texture and color to it. And so I started with sausage fattener. I, I, bumped up the color knob, added a slight amount of fatness to give the bottom end just a slight little lift. So here's what it sounds like. Who is not repaid is dead. And then I also added saturation I've knob. Been for a trip. But the saturation knob actually doesn't come in until the chorus because uh, so it's automated to be turned off during the verse section, but then when the chorus comes in, I automated this saturation to be turned on. Take me back. So it adds that extra lift, that extra level of drive and grit for the chorus. And a cool byproduct of that then is it raises the volume of this lead vocal track. 
So I did that basically instead of automating the overall volume, I put another plugin on it on and automated that. And that's just one little trick that I like to use when I want to automate the volume from say verse to chorus with a vocal. And then, so here's the part that really matters on this lead vocal. So the plate reverb, we've already talked about the reverb and we're sending this just a slight amount of it to the reverb. And then I can sell myself. Oh, and by the way, if there are auto-tune police out there, yes, I do have a little bit of auto-tune on my uh, track right here. Just because this is a remake that I slapped together, I wasn't trying to be perfect, but I still wanted the, the pitches and the vocal to still feel nice and tight. So I did slap a little bit of auto-tune on it. Nothing crazy, it's not like robotic or anything. But yeah, there is a little bit on there. And then I'm sending this through the lead vocals bus, which is right here. So the the slap delay is what really matters because we, we're sending this to a bit of reverb again. Not so right. But you're not hearing it that much. But the slap delay, you are hearing. Listen. Along with you. Isn't that cool? So let's come back here. I've been searching for that's that Lord Huron vocal sound, right? It's that wide slap delay. And as far as getting this type of slap delay sound, just use any delay that you have. You can use stock delays to achieve this. And the essence of a slap delay is left and right. You know, I like to do slightly offset. So if you have a stereo style or a dual style delay, where you can have one, like as you see here, 132 on the left, 151 milliseconds on the right. That way they're slightly offset. That way you get a stereo spread where the left is being is slapping back at a slightly different speed than the right. And then the feedback is at zero. That way it only slaps back one time. So it's not like, not like, not like, not like that. Instead, it's just not like, not like. So it just slaps back one time and we are good to go. We've got some drive and then I just messed around with this delay plugin, right? And then I'll put a, a little bit of reverb on this delay channel because again, this is a return track, which means we can put multiple things on these types of tracks to make the original effect um, give it its own flavor. So this is fully a delay track, but then I'm sending this delay signal through a little bit of reverb. Now the reverb is only at, a, at around 25, 30% on the mix knob because I didn't want to wash it out too much. I still wanted to retain that sense of definition on that slap back delay. Again, and then take me back to the night we met. So that's the slap delay. It's a beautiful sound, and especially for this indie folk, Lord Huron type of vibe, just using a basic slap delay like this can make such a difference, and it can just really create that vibe that you're probably looking for if you're striving for this type of vocal sound. So that's what's happening with the vocals. Again, if you need help with the EQ and compression, just download the free guides below. Now, there is actually one more thing happening though with the lead vocal, and it's this little octave layer that comes in during the chorus at just two specific lines or on two specific lines. Take me back to the night Did you hear that? So it's this high octave doing this. And then it does the same thing over here. Take me back to the night we and by doing this type of very uh, strategically placed with these types of things where you have that high octave layer not present during the entire chorus or during the entire song, it's only on specific phrases. And it helps give your song just that sense of lift. And like, imagine if you're writing a movie, you don't want the story to just be Steady, 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 and even the entire time. Same thing for your songs. You want to create those moments of perhaps just where th the pressure gets turned up or the intensity gets turned up or everything chills out and releases for a second. You want those types of components and this plays into that. So this has that extra, just that extra lift for those couple lines in the chorus. So that is the vocal high octave. And we've talked about the vocal, the O's, the electric guitar arp. Now let's talk about the pad and strings that we have here. So this is really cool because I've got two tracks, the pad on the left, which is like 50 left, and then the pad and then the strings, which is panned also around 50, but on the right side. Now the now it starts with the pad coming in here. I'm not the 
There you hear a little bit, right? It's just doing that. Notice the volume swelling. So here you barely hear it, right? And you don't really hear it in the mix at all. But over here, like it, and that, that's because I automated the volume. Because in between the vocal phrases, I wanted to hear that pad a little bit more. So I automated the volume. So it's not a straight, even volume the whole way through. It just kind of starts very low. And then I like turn it up. That way you hear it. And then it turns back down. Right, and that creates, again, it, that sense of swelling, of creating moments for even the individual tracks like a pad or like we talked about earlier with that high octave vocal layer. You're creating these very distinct moments instead of having every track playing the playing the same thing from start to finish, right? It's these types of details that really can bring a production to life. And then I'm just doing the same thing with the strings here too. So the strings come in over here as the song starts to continue, you know, as it continues to build. And that's just what I'm doing. Just playing like one, two note chords, very simple. And then so the pad and the strings are then layered in, one left, one right. And then I can Whoop. MIDI doing its thing with the <laughs> sustain and whatnot. There we go. And these are both Omnisphere patches. Um, so, but just because you don't have Omnisphere, obviously these are just kind of background tracks. I just used Omnisphere because that is my go-to piece of software for strings, pads, synths, bells, anything like that. Omnisphere is my go-to. Um, but you don't have to spend the 500 bucks on Omnisphere if, especially if you haven't even looked at what you have. And like you probably have some really good sounding VSTs and pad sounds inside of your DAW that you already have, that you already own. So make sure you at least know what you have before you, you know, spend $500. Although if you do have $500 to spend, Omnisphere is the greatest thing that happened since like, I don't know what to compare it to. It's that good. It's just, it's fantastic. But in any case, We've got the pad and the strings there. Now we, we've got just a couple more things. Now, before I forget about it, we do have this little rain ambience track down here. And just doing that, right? And so that just adds a bit of real world texture and ambience and so, and these types of loops, right? Where it's like rain or just traffic or like white noise or guitar amp noise, right? All these things can create that sense of, of texture, that sense of authenticity. And especially when you're talking about this type of indie folk alternative, those types of elements can make such a difference in creating that raw, authentic type of feel. So that's what we got going there. Just a couple more things to get to before we wrap this up and then just listen to the whole thing and watch it be all glued together. So we've got a bass guitar that comes in during the course over here. most of you, some are now, none of you. And it's playing the most basic, just following the chord progression in the most basic way. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, by the ghost of you. And then I'm sending this bass guitar through uh, a little GTR amp from Waves, and that's all that's going on there. And then finally, when it comes to the drums, so I started with addictive drums, and the the beat sounds like this. Now that little ride symbol, it's cut off, right? Why is that? Well, when I was listening to the original track by Lord Huron, I was kind of hearing that type of sound. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it almost sounded like a ride symbol that's cut short where you're only hearing like that first little part of it and you're not hearing that legato or that release of the ride. Instead, you're seeing right? It's almost like a hi-hat, but it still sounds like a ride at that initial, at that initial hit, right? And so I just went into my addictive drums here and I adjusted the volume envelope so that you don't get all that so it, so that that doesn't happen. Instead, it just cuts off. That way you get more of that sound and it worked better for this type of rhythm that I was going for, right? And then I did layer that ride symbol with a, a tambourine that I have. And I just recorded in this tambourine. 
and it's just doing playing the same pattern as the ride and yeah like this is addictive drums again i just started with the preset and then i adjusted it and edited it from there until i got what i thought sounded good i do have a little bit of like rc20 i think on the drums here yeah rc20 and some saturation with saturation knob and sausage fattener you know it's pretty standard stuff nothing crazy happening there and then i do have a layer drum track as well so this layer drum track sounds like this so this is just an interesting preset an interesting sound that i came across when i was browsing through and when i was just experimenting and i thought it actually sounded kind of cool to layer that in with the original it just adds a bit more fullness to those drums. So, my friend, that's it. That is what it looks like to produce a song, this indie folk alternative style song, from start to finish. Now, obviously, I didn't create a full three, four minute song, but I did create the gist of it, right? We've got the full verse and then a full chorus. But notice how everything kind of works together. There's nothing insane. There's nothing crazy and flamboyant happening. No, it's just one brick. Like we've got that guitar arp, you know, you might start there and then you add a little vocal melody and a lyric. And then you might add some nice O's to create that nice vibe. And then add a little high octave vocal, just a certain or add a couple lines in the song, right? And then just uh, some electric guitar chords, just one electric guitar chords track for when the chorus comes in to make the chorus bigger. And then you could add a pad sound and a string sound that kind of swell in and out. And then a bass guitar and then some drums. And that's it. So I really hope this gave you some clarity. Now it's time for you to go practice, right? There is no real replacement for practicing. And if, you, if you're not sure where to start, maybe try maybe start with covers start with remakes just to get that just to get the juices flowing just to start kind of exercising that creative muscle so that you can start to really get good at the skill of creating songs so i hope this was inspiring to you i'm going to go ahead and play this little remake version that i did from start to finish and one more time before i do that again i do have my free vocal eq and compression guides link in the description below so be sure to check those out those are really going to help you get some clarity on EQ and compression so that you actually get a sense of what you're doing so that you're not lost in making, you know, 27 different EQ moves without knowing what they're doing. Same with compression, right? So if you need some clarity and some help with that, then I've, again, I've got the links in the description below. So that is it for today's video. I'm going to hit play and then we'll wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching. Say